other uh, discipline, disciplines uh, get me a better point of view in terms of coaching or in terms of treating kids uh, that not only being focused on, on football. That's, I, I completely understand um, uh, what you mean when you say uh, holistic. Um, I think it's very important to, to, to see more than just what's in front of you, um, to try and see things uh, from a wider um, perspective. Um, so saying that, um, now that we know uh, your background and uh, how you got into coaching, um, who would you say are your coaching influences? Um, and you can name people who are who you know or people you don't know, maybe somebody on TV, because I know all of us, uh, when we start watching football, um, we don't always know the people that, you know, influence us. Like, for example, you know, I started watching football because of Ronaldo. And I'm a big Arsenal supporter. Um, Arsene Wenger, you know, the way the style of football that he has always played is one of the things that drew me into coaching. Um, and just his mannerism, his way of life, his the way he composes himself. I really, you know, that's one of the things I really love about Arsene Wenger. Um, also, uh, one of my first coaching mentors, he's also somebody that influenced me. Um, he wasn't anyone famous. He was just a local coach. But the way that he, um, he, the way that he um, coached children, I always, I always thought was really good. He had a very good manner with children. So, you know, these are one of the things which um, I learned from. So, you know, that's somebody that influenced me. So um, I just wanted to find out who influenced you. Uh, well... I'm very lucky because I'm from Barcelona. I've been living in Barcelona almost all my all my, all my life, uh, and and I work with a lot of people that that are really influent in the in the football world. No, uh, so I don't need to go far from Barcelona to find my influencers. Uh, in that case, for example, uh, as 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 you said, no, you you have a lot of local coaches that influence you a lot. Uh, I have a lot of my colleagues that, that give me always, every day, a lot of inputs that make me grow. Uh, even when I was in, in Nigeria, the colleagues were with the ones that I was working. Some coaches that are uh, today in, in that call uh, give me a lot of experience and a lot of inputs that make me grow as well as a coach. If I have to put some names that, that, that some of you might know, of course, uh, Pep Guardiola, that maybe is one of, of the best coaches that we ever had, uh, following the, the pathway that uh, Johan Cruyff started in Barcelona. But then there's another person that, that's still working in Barcelona, that is my head of in the methodology department, that is Paco Seirulo, that, uh, well, he's, he's one of the professors from, from our methodology. And, and of course, I'm learning a lot of things from him every, every single day. And, and for us, a it's a real pleasure to be with him that at the beginning I was studying him when I was doing my license or I was just uh, reading the papers uh, of football and, and now I have the opportunity to be uh, hand by hand with him. Wow. Um, I think, uh, well, I think anybody who, um, you know, has knowledge of Barcelona will um, know about the work of, uh, of Coach Paco or Professor Paco um, uh, he's somebody who is highly influential. Oh, sorry about this coach. Uh, sorry. Um, yes, he's somebody who is um, highly influential um, in uh, the ways um, and the way Barcelona has been able to progress as a club um, behind the scenes. Um, so um, you've You've mentioned to us about how um, you went to university, you, you were studying university, um, you uh, learned from other coaches, um, the people that have influenced you. So how do you develop yourself? How do you develop yourself as a coach? Um, and how do you um, continue to progress? How do you, how do you develop yourself as a coach and continue to progress? Well, I think we have to be in constant uh, progress as a coaches. No, the, we are coaching the most complex sport in the world, so we have to be all the time trying to uh, know how to improve in our coaching or how 
how the sport is changing, how the people is changing. And based on that, as I said, uh, I'm trying to have this holistic way or this holistic point of view. No? So I'm not just trying to learn or to, to get experience from other coaches or from other people related on sports. I also try to learn and read a lot uh, from other professionals uh, that might be not related on football. For example, uh, we have Natalia Balague that, uh, well, is a, is a professor as well uh, from, from the Sports Institute here in Barcelona. Uh, that, well, she's studying the, the complexity of, of the humans, yes. And she introduces a lot, a lot of people that is not directly related with football. Uh, but is, for example, related on the medicine aspect or the psychological aspect that is giving us a lot of input as well that, that is helping me a lot uh, on, my, on my coaching profile or my coaching career. No? Because as I said, uh, you can learn a lot of things from just from internet. You can find a lot of things about football in internet. But at the end, uh, what makes us different is when we go one step forward and we try to focus not only on the football part or the technical or tactical part. We go a little bit more ahead and we start uh, checking uh, on the psychological part of the players on, okay, uh, which kind of intervention I have to, to, to do in that case or in that other case or with that age. So this uh, holistic experience or this holistic uh, learning from different people, not just on, on the soccer, on the football side, is giving me a lot of, of no, this uh, well, this. knowledge that I want. Sorry about that, Coach. Um, okay. Yes, um, yeah, I really love the answer because um, I think a lot of the time um, when, you know, um, when coaches think of how to continue to develop as a coach, um, a lot of coaches, they only look for football stuff um, because, you know, football is the sport that we're coaching. So I really like the fact that, you know, you said that uh, you find uh, learning outside of football. Um, I think that is something that's very interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think, well, we, we have to be, as I said, it's very complex that sport and, and if we can learn, for example, Paco Seirulo, he, he didn't start with football. He started being a coach on athletics. Then he started uh, being a coach or the, the trainer on the handball uh, Barca team. And then uh, he started in, in, well, in, in football, but not even the first team. He started on the youth clubs or on the youth uh, teams. So... At the end, he have a lot of uh, knowledge in other sports, in other ways to do, that is giving him that uh, holistic point of view uh, and, of course, helping him to, to be the professional that, that, that he is. That's, um, that's, that's very interesting that you mentioned other sports. Um, one thing I'm always very interested about is um, people who come from other sports and they have that knowledge and they bring it into football and they use it um, in ways, you know, people are not always uh, um, understanding. Um, for example, um, I know in Spain, uh, futsal is uh, very popular. Um, I just wondered, did you ever have any um, experience in futsal? Uh, not as a coach, but uh, in, in Barca Academy, we have the Barca Academy Futsal in Barcelona and also we started uh, a new one in, in, in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. Uh, that as well is like the, the country where the futsal started. Uh, so, of course, I'm in contact with the methodology, futsal methodology department that is very close to us or very close to the football methodology department. And we are... Uh, constantly sharing our opinion, sharing uh, the way that we are working uh, versus the way that they are working. And of course, this one is giving me another point of view in, in futsal, but not only in futsal. We are trying also to talk with the people in basket. We are trying to talk with the people uh, in the athletics department. So we, we are like in an interconnected uh, methodology club that is trying or that we are trying all the time to know about, about everything. Mm, I, I, I completely understand. Um, 
I think it's definitely very important um, to take into consideration the um, culture of a place um, when you want to um, input your methodology or you want to um, you want to go there and install a certain way of, um, of or style of play or even a certain to understand how they learn you know to understand their where their cultural learnings and I think that's definitely very important. Um, sure. I have to ask you um, obviously I know this is um, I know sometimes it's not always easy to word but um, is it possible would it how would you describe your own um, coaching philosophy? Uh, well, that's not easy to answer, but <laughs> uh, I would like to describe myself as, as a facilitator, like as a person who is helping the players to develop. So I'm not, I'm not the one who's developing them. I'm just helping them to develop their self as I want them to enjoy. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying while I'm, I'm coaching. So I want them to feel the same feelings that I'm having. Yeah. I want them to, 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 to be part of their progression and not me to be part of their progression. Yes. I want to be a facilitator. I don't know if, if, if this word is, uh, is, is used in English, uh, but we use a lot in, in the Barca academies. Yes. We are not coaches. We are facilitators. We are just uh, people who's helping the players to develop their self. So, well, I, I consider myself a, a lucky person to be doing what I'm doing because I'm liking, uh, I like what I'm doing. So I want them to feel the same. Yes, uh, I'm trying to be very close to the players. I like to hear people, uh, not only players, also coaches, uh, talk with them, being very emphatic with them, uh, putting myself in the position that they would like to be, not that I would like to be. Yes, that is very important. And sometimes we, we are treating the people like we would like us to, 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 to be treated, but it's not what we want, it's what they want. Yes. So uh, if I have to describe myself as a coach or my philosophy is to make sure that the players are enjoying, to make sure that they are having fun as, as I'm having fun when, when I'm coaching and, and to be a person that is sharing the, 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 the way with them. Uh, not that he's showing them the way. Um, I think what you said there is it, it's very good. And um, well, facilitator is a word that's used in English, but uh, not as often <laughs> as uh, uh, maybe people would like. Um, uh, a facilitator, um, I think from my definition, is somebody that doesn't try to control everything. It's somebody that allows um, learning to happen um, by providing the environment um, and that's uh, that's excellent and that's the perfect definition of, of uh, which kind which kind of coaches we are trying to to produce in in Barcelona yes yeah? so or we are trying to just hire when when they are coming to Barcelona people that is helping and is uh, that are creating the perfect environment for the players to develop instead of of just control them to to, to develop Mm. Um, so, um, well, this isn't a coaching question, but uh, obviously somebody that grew up in uh, Barcelona, um, I probably should have asked you the first, um, your, your, your love of football, um, where, did, where did that come from? Who, 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 was, who was it that caught your attention or what was it that caught your attention about the sport? Uh, not family because my father wasn't a player or, or he was like a mountaineer. He likes to, to do trips on the mountain, but, but he never played football. So I think it was the culture, as you said, the culture is, is also a, 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 an important aspect when you are coaching. No? And in that case, in Barcelona in the, or in Catalonia or in Spain in general, uh, football is the sport number one. So all the people is playing on the school, all the people is playing after school, all the people even is playing uh, at home. So I think it was, was just the, the culture and the, the environment where I was living that uh, makes me start playing football as a player first and then as a coach. Um, thank you for that, coach. Um, we've reached the end of part, of part A, uh, which was just to, get your, um, just to get a bit of your background so that we can understand uh, where you are coming from as a coach. 
Um, part B is a bit more focused on the coaching. Um, so we're just going to get straight into it. Um, so um, the part B is mainly focused on interventions in coaching. Um, and we just wanted to find out um, how important do you consider feedback, um, um, feedback and interventions when you are helping develop a player? How, how important are they to development? Well, that's, that's a very general question and I, I'm sure now we're going to go into it. Uh, intervention and feedback uh, is helping players to develop. I think yes, yes, but uh, Mark William, that is, a, is an author that have plenty papers and publications related on football, uh, said that the objective as a coach is to optimize our players in order to get a better performance on the competition, yes? And I remember uh, my first team that I coached, that the coordinator of that club told, told me, okay, that's your team. Uh, they are really young. Make sure that at the end of the season, they are not worse than now. Okay. That, that <laughs> I'm not asking you to, to make them better. I'm just telling you to don't make them worse. And I, I was thinking, why he's telling me that? Yes. And now I start, now I start understanding that as a coach, we have the power to, to destroy the career of a player. Yes. Or, or to, to don't help them to perform or don't help them to improve. Yes. And, and, here we have a lot of coaches from from Nigeria, and I had the the. I was very lucky when I was there. I've been there, and 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 I experienced a lot of players that have been playing on the street for a lot of years. Maybe came to Barca Academy with 15, with 14, with 16 years old, and before that they were just uh, playing on the streets, and they were fantastic players. They've never had a coach, maybe, but they were fantastic players. Yes. So as a coach, we have to make sure that everything we are doing, we are uh, trying to improve the player, not destroy the player. So if we are destroying the creativity of the player, if we are not creating the perfect environment for them, uh, at the end, we are not helping them to improve. Okay. So yes, feedback interventions uh, are helping the players if we are doing the right interventions and the correct feedbacks. Um, so, you know, we, we, since we started, we've talked a lot about environment, about um, creating that right environment. Um, what are some things maybe that coaches do wrong or not wrong, but maybe that um, coaches are not aware of that, um, that stop the environment from, from, being that, 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 from being that progressive environment? What, what are some things maybe that that you know, it's a common it's a common thing that maybe coaches do, but maybe they're not aware of um, that stop the environment from being as progressive as it can be, or effective. Maybe that's a better word. Well, that's 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 difficult to say. But uh, uh, for example, did you do you have kids? No, no. <laughs> you don't have kids. Well, I'm sure there's there's a lot of coaches here that have kids, uh, and and I, I I don't have kids yet, but I have friends that have kids and that friends never teach the the kid how to how to talk how to speak yes they are just talking on the on the house or on the street or whatever and finally the kids start saying mama or papa or daddy or whatever yes so just with that environment the kid is learning how to speak we are not uh, explaining him okay that's the a b c d if you join these letters you are creating that word we are just uh, talking and then they are experiencing different things and at the end they are, they are speaking, yes? So I think as a coaches, sometimes we want to create environments that are not the best ones for them, that we think, okay, that's the best way for him to, to, to uh, improve on control and we are repeating the control, the control, the control so many times on, on, on a specific way and then he's receiving another ball in another way that he's never experienced before or that he's never practiced and he don't know how to solve this situation. Yes? And as I said at the beginning, we are coaching the most complex sport in the world. Uh, we are playing 11 against 11 in a big space uh, with a feed, uh, in a, with a small ball. So if we are trying to, to analyze every single action that is happening and to show them the 
solution of every single action that is happening, it's going to be impossible. Yes, and there's some coaches that maybe, and myself, when I start coaching, I remember that I was saying, okay, when the ball is coming from that side, try to control like this. No, just try to control or just try to find the best solution. I'm not going to explain him what is the best solution. I'm just going to try to create the environment to him to experience different solutions. And then with the feedback, that's why it's very important, the feedback, we have the quality as a coaches to identify which is the best solution that they take and explain him. Okay, in that situation, you decided that. That was excellent. Why? Because blah, 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 blah. In that other action, you decided that other action. And that's wrong. Or that's not as good as the first one. Because whatever. Yes? So I think as a coaches, sometimes we are creating uh, specific behaviors to the players that are not the right ones. I don't know if I answer your question. Was, I, yes, of yes. course, it's, it's, it's much complex that, that uh, what I explained, but but more uh, or less. I, from well, um, I can I can understand what you're saying. Um, sometimes I think um, it's all about the correct intervention at times, and it's about uh, picking your moments. I think uh, that is uh, a key skill that you develop over time as a coach um, is timing your intervention correctly. And for me, um, personally, as the coach, um, it's about um, wording my, um, my intervention correctly. Um, I think at times, um, as coaches, you know, we want to intervene on every um, situation or every scenario on the field. And um, we can sometimes take a second to stand back and allow play to go on. And then maybe it gives us time to properly word what we want to say. Because at times, maybe our interventions, um, they're not as accurate for the player. Or maybe they're not very helpful to the player. You know, sometimes we, we say things which are very generic uh, to the players. And um, they don't understand or they just nod their head to, to stop us from talking. Uh, I know it happens as coaches. You know, your coach stops the play and he says, more efforts. Uh, and the player um, doesn't understand. He, he doesn't understand what you're saying, um, but he just nods his head to stop you from talking. So, um, what are some um, maybe? Um, how how would you um, advise coaches to um, make use of their interventions, or how how can they better? How can they be more effective with their interventions? Well. Uh... I don't have the key. I mean, I don't know. Uh, and at the end, every every coach is different, and not every coach is different. Every players are all the players are different. So I think the most important here is the intention as a coaches. What intention we have? Yes, and and you explained very well. Sometimes we want to correct a lot of things. I think uh, as a coach, sometimes we have to put some glasses and say, okay, these glasses aren't going to be to focus on. Uh, controls or on uh, this content that I want to them to improve yes and only be focusing on that and try to go to the macro aspect to the micro aspect yes not just focusing on okay uh, you are working on attracting players yes to create space in another uh, zone okay so we attract four players what we have to do now we move yes that's perfect that's the like the uh, big uh, aspect of the content but let's go to the details of it yes uh, which players you attract in which way uh, are they focusing on the ball are they uh, uh, defenders profiles or strong profiles of the other team or they are just random players that you attract uh, then how this ball is going to move to the other side you're going to do a straight pass you're going to use another person to attract even more people over there is the right time to move that ball? Yes. So uh, going to that small uh, aspects, if we have the intention of, of it, I think that's the best way. Yeah? Uh, um, but sorry, as sorry I said, to interrupt you just there, coach. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see the timer on the screen. Can you see yeah, I can see that one minute. Yeah. Oh, um, unfortunately, uh, the, um, the webinar is about to end. So I will need to send another link um, for everyone to rejoin. 
um, because I've got less than a minute left. Um, it, it has a time, unfortunately. So um, I'm going to send a link and everyone should rejoin and we'll just start from there. Um, so I'm okay. just, no just going to end it here. No problem. Sure.